<sighs> another cycle, another grind. Number 42, please step up to the booth. Thank you. Oh, you're a sleeper. You new to the eye? Oh, okay, wait, what, what was I supposed to tell a, a citizen sleeper? Well, in Citizen Sleeper, you're playing as the aforementioned sleeper in this case. Uh, being some kind of like synced consciousness, copy, engram, think EXO from Destiny. Kind of artificial body owned by a corporation and you run away from that. And you're hiding out on a station called the Eye, an old rundown station who the megacorp kind of bailed after things began to fail and now is run by the people left behind and other refugees. After a massive financial crisis back in the core worlds, which had led to uh, this colonial system falling apart. Now, Citizen Sleeper itself is a lot more of a story game and the story is a big part of it, both the different chains and routes and things you can explore and do. So I'm not gonna be covering too much of that specifically, just know that when you're going through your journeys, you're actually gonna meet a lot of fun people and entertaining people and people you would do everything for. And the kind of vibe, while it's nice neon bright in space, the future, it's a lot more chill, especially with the music in the background, the actual gameplay elements of it itself. Sure, there's deadlines, timed events and threats, but the entire station itself does feel like a lot in the story you go through, it's a lot of people just making it. I mean, heck, look, I'm currently just a sci-fi space station office worker with robotic hand. That's kind of what you're preserving, as there are still threats both to you and to the station itself and balancing the different scenarios that can happen, followed in your drives. But before we get on to the actual game itself and the various meta motives and directions within, let's cover the various kinds of sleepers and the actual mechanics you'll be interacting with. So in Citizen Sleeper, you'll play as a machinist, operator, or extractor. Now, in late game, these don't really matter too much and there's not a permanent track on what kind of class you were when heading into certain events. It just depends what your starting skills are and the one negative you get. You have five skills overall in the game. These cover a variety of things and whenever you're making a dice roll in the game or a type of situation, it will ask for one of these or it will require one of these. So you might have bonuses, you might have negatives. And occasionally when you level up, you might even get perks focusing into some of these skills that can be used for other things outside of just dice rolls. Speaking of the dice rolls, every day you start off with five dice. Well, sometimes you don't, sometimes we'll, we'll cover those again, but the dice itself, this is your main mechanic you're going to be interacting with for the entire game. Outside of choices you make in stories and your inventory system, which is generally point and click, the dice rolls are where it's at. Now you get the set at the start of every cycle, aka you know, the station running through its full cycle at a day. Then you would go into a skill and either there will be a bonus or there'll be a minus or Depending on what the dice is used for, you might just need a specific number, though that's a separate mechanic. Well, I won't touch on that right now. Again, story stuff. Oh, it's just a d6, so one to six. So you enter one of these skills, there might be a different risk depending on what the actual activity is, and it could have negatives and positives. There's a perk that you can pick up to actually see these positives and negatives, but in general, it's kind of just moving on to hit a goal or a repeatable action or getting cryo. Cryo being the currency, which you're gonna need, in general, it's a mix of things you're going to be doing with this dice. One of them is not being hunted down and, you know, brought back in force or um, material requisition under force. Sleepers are considered material. There's also then actually aiding and potentially trying to help the different people you meet on the station, the different allies you make, meet enemies you have. You're trying to balance these out. And of course, the biggest threat to you that's consistently going on, your failing condition. You're dying. Every sleeper has built-in needed stimulants based off the mega corporation. And well, that's what's supposed to stop you from running away, but you did anyway. And guess who's dying because of that? Don't worry though. Well, do worry. A part of your reason on the station is to try and find any kind of those stimulants or something to try and fix it. That is one of the end goals, which brings up the fact there are multiple end goals. There are fail states. <laughs> Alongside your drives, which is generally the mission structure. Every time you finish a drive, you get a perk point, and every time you continue on, it will progress the story. There are end states, and there are a definitely a good amount of drives which just don't end, but helps you meet a new character, have a connection. Generally, just good vibes in some of them. It's a nice, you really get to know these people on the station. Yes, there's 
the pricks. Then it's just the various stories of these people on the station, the troubles they're going through, the troubles you're going through, working with them, them helping you, you helping them back, trying to stop off these bad guys or pricks, and it's just... It's a great story to run through. If the mechanics are simple enough to understand, you can really get into it, and it is... It gives a real city management vibe, even though it's not a city management vibe. You just have your resources of your, you know, general energy, which you get from, well, lose over time from resting, get from eating food and doing certain activities, not covering that. You have your dice pool, which is allows you to actually interact with things, because you do need dice to interact with most things. And speaking of that, the condition itself. When that worsens, and you can take damage from other things, it's not just a cycle thing, you lose dice. <laughs> your dice pool overall. Even if you wait until the last minute to try and fix your condition, it's not worth it, because you won't be able to keep up with everything else and all the ticking clocks. There are various running clocks, both on timers count, well, all of them are counting up, but in the sense of, if it's red, usually that's, oh no, you have to do something to beat this, stop this, or slow it, or bring it back, or stop it, just in general. Normally those are bad things, like, uh, corporations coming after you, or other, other, other insidious things. Money coming due, someone also being in trouble, but then there's also some beneficial ones. Either things you just have to wait for, as it just takes multiple cycles, so that's a load off your shoulders to an extent or not, if you really need that to be finished. Sometimes it's things you can add to over time by successful rolls. There's also failure clocks, so if you fail three times on activity as that's counting up, you suffer some kind of penalty. Though I will mention, it is hard to die in this game. Well, not hard to die, I mean if you don't take care of the basic things, yes you'll die, but that isn't to say there isn't failure. Yes, there are bad endings, but there are so many endings. And not just endings to the game overall, but endings to all these individual stories and interactions with people. Some of them good, some of them bad, and sometimes you fail them. And that hurts. So I can't talk too much more about this. All I can really give is a big recommendation for me, and to go out and play it. Because it's, it's an experience. It's a grand experience. It's so nice to read these stories with people. Also, go talk to the vending machine. And while you're at it, looking for various things on the eye, you might bump into some strange things. Well, Sleeper, I uh, hope that gave you a rough rundown of what we have at the uh, eye to offer. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Good luck to you, I guess. Ugh, mushrooms. Thank you all so much for watching, and don't forget there will be a second video tied to this, one talking about certain mechanics, certain themes, certain things that we can bring from this game and bring into tabletop RPGs. Which I'm excited about, and I hope you are as well. That should be a week from now, you'll get updates. Anywho, it's the end of the video. There are your good old vids, nice music in the background, big old space station stuff. I've got a sci-fi corporate gig to go to. Bye. <laughs>